because we keep people at arm's length and give them silent treatment and allow them to pay in different ways that this is the way that the father does to us when we sin against him but it is completely um against the truth of god's word right <laughs> Hey guys, I am Lady Glenn. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I haven't seen you in so long. I hope that you are all okay. Drop in the comment section and let me know if you are doing well. Yeah? So welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome, welcome. And if you are a regular, welcome back thank you for being here commenting sharing and watching my content of course you know we have a youtube song that we have to sing so all the new subscribers get ready to learn it all the regular subscribers are you ready are you ready ready steady go uh welcome to the legacy family with lady glenn Ooh, lady glenn Oh, welcome to the legacy family with Lady Glenn, Lady Glenn, <laughs> to spread the gospel and brighten up your day. Welcome to legacy family. So guys, today I want to talk to you about a topic that has certainly been convicting me. It is the topic of forgiveness so i've done forgiveness of self on this channel before i'm going to insert it right here uh, but i've not done forgiveness in terms of forgiving one another right so let's go into it and of course the word of god tells us that we ought to forgive one another just as christ has forgiven us but in order for us to do that we must first understand what is forgiveness of course as usual i have my notes so if i'm looking down it means i'm looking at my notes right because girl love to talk i want to stay on track and within a particular time frame yeah so in order for us to do this thing that god has required of us we must first know what it is so what is forgiveness do you know what it is Comment below if you know what it is. So forgiveness really is canceling the debt, right? What does that mean? It means the person is not punished for the wrong he or she has done. They don't pay any penalty, right? That is what forgiveness is. And in order for us to forgive we must first know and understand what it is because if we have a misconception of forgiveness then we won't be able to obey the word of god as god has instructed us to right so when we talk about forgiving canceling the debt what does that mean an example is if somebody comes to my house and destroys my camera the camera that i love so much for youtube right if somebody comes and destroy it forgiveness is that I don't ask that person to replace the, the, the camera, right? That is an example of forgiveness. They don't have to replace it. They don't have to pay to repair it. I say, you know what? You are forgiven. The debt is canceled. It's like it has never happened. There's nothing that you have to do anymore, right? You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to replace it. That is what forgiveness is. However, the forgiveness that we have been practicing in this, especially in this modern era, is that, you know what? You did something to me. I absolutely hate that you did it to me. I want to do it back to you. I want to uh, cuss you out, even fight you physically. But you know what? I am not going to do it. Instead, you are going to be paying in another way. That's really what we're doing, you know. So we don't cuss them out on all those things, but we allow people to pay in another way. How do we allow them to pay? We allow them to pay because when we stop speaking to them. So you did this to me, and the price that you have to pay is distance. And I'm telling you that this thing 
um, convicted me so much because as I prepared this, I realized in my own life that I have not been practicing forgiveness in the biblical sense. So you have hurt me and the price you pay is that I'm not going to speak to you. I'm not going to walk and tell anybody else about what you did, but I'm not going to speak to you. And so we have allowed people to pay the price of distance, right? That is the penalty that that person gets. And we say, you know what, I'm going to love, you have to just love some people from a distance, you know, and especially if this is a close relationship, like a familial relationship or, or a friend, friendly relationship. Yeah, you're going to get the distance, right? How is another way we, 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 we allow people to pay? We're like, you know, I'm not going to reach out to you, but if they reach out, I'm going to respond. So that, that's the same kind of distance that we're using to allow people to pay and another thing is this silent treatment it's the distance and silent treatment they usually work hand in hand we give the person silent treatment think about if you're in a marriage uh and your husband or your wife does something to you instead of forgiving the person or we say we forgive the person but guess what silent treatment there's no communication there's no talking if you talk to me i'm barely responding if you talk to the person they're barely responding that is not forgiveness that is not practice Practicing forgiveness in the biblical sense because the debt isn't cancelled you are allowing the person to pay but in another way you have not asked the person to replace the camera but you're vexed with them you're giving them the silent treatment you're giving them distance because of what they have done right and another way how we allow people to pay is guess what you did something to me I'm I, I mean, I'm not too interested in you right now and so I don't celebrate any occasion in your life it's your birthday and I would usually send a message I'm not gonna send any message and tell you happy birthday I am not gonna send any message and tell you happy anniversary these are the prices that we have been allowing people to pay because of wrong that has been done to us how is that canceling the debt once the person is paying in any way that is not forgiveness it is not the cancellation of a debt another way in which we allow people to pay is our is rejoicing when something bad happens they hurt us and so if something bad happens to them mm -hmm, yes man yes the lord sister you do whatever to me and we rejoice but that is completely against scripture because the bible says that we're not supposed to rejoice at the downfall of our brother or our sister and so we realize that this forgiveness thing that we have been practicing and you're like you know i'm not keeping malice you know, and whatever but the truth is you have not cancelled the debt the debt has not been cancelled can you imagine if christ were to say you know what you did this and so i'm giving you the silent treatment i'm keeping you at a distance and it's the reason too that we misunderstand god's love and forgiveness because we have misunderstood what it means to love our brothers and sisters and so we believe that i think i'm going ahead of my notes but we believe that because we keep people at arm's length and give them silent treatment and allow them to pay in different ways that this is the way that the father does to us when we sin against him but it is completely um against the truth of god's word right so let us talk about four myths so that is now us understanding forgiveness and what it means and how we allow people to pay so let us talk about four myths of forgiveness yeah and the first one is that you can only forgive somebody if he or she requests the forgiveness like huh what mm? what you say the first thing is that Jesus being on the cross, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. So if forgiveness is dependent on the person asking, Jesus on the cross canceled that, canceled that myth, that it is not true. You can forgive somebody for something that they don't even know that they're doing. They're not even aware that they're doing, right? And what it does is that one, once again, when we misunderstand forgiveness, if we think that people can only be forgiven when they ask, it means then that we believe, we believe that we are only forgiven of our sins when we 
ask for forgiveness but long before we even knew that we sinned and knew that we needed a savior jesus came and what did he do he made a way so that you and i could be forgiven he called us forgiven we didn't know that we we needed forgiveness but he made away another thing that another challenge that it poses is that if we're only forgiven when we ask then the thought is that we possibly can know all the sin that we have committed right and not even confess them all and so forgiveness is not about asking the person asking right or anything of the sort as we see in the example of jesus towards us he forgave us even before we knew he forgave us up until the point that we don't even some of the things we don't even know that we're doing but we have been forgiven so we can't even possibly think about all the sin that we've done and so maybe when judgment day come we say boy i would have 10 sin and i did only remember to rip the ask god to forgiveness for eight and so the other two is there absolutely not we we cannot know the magnitude of how we sin daily against god let alone to ask his forgiveness for every single sin right so that's myth number one and we've done away with that now myth number two is that forgiveness requires forgetting and i mean this is often something that believers say forgive and forget can you forget yes perhaps yeah but forgiveness does not require forgetting you can remember and still forgive and we see that come out in the example of joseph when joseph was sold to the egyptians when his brothers came he joseph said how is my father doing and they like they were stunned they almost like they couldn't like they're like what they couldn't respond to him and then joseph said it is me your brother whom you sold to the egyptians so joseph remembered exactly what his brothers did not and he said it to them not in a way to say mm -hmm, to like rub it in their face but he remembered the fact is that he remembered and so forgiveness does not require forgetting it is god alone who the word says that he forgives our sins and remembers them no more he has completely blotted out our sins and he doesn't remember them but we were created to remember when we get a scar most times we remember how we got the scar and we remember even why we got the scar yes so we see that in genesis 45 verse 4 forgiveness does not require forgetting and you know what for humans the beauty of forgiveness is that when i remember what you have done to me i still choose to forgive you i still choose to cancel the debt right and then the third myth of forgiveness is that forgiveness and reconciliation are linked no all the time meaning once you forgive somebody it must mean reconciliation no it doesn't mean that because re reconciliation requires two people forgiveness only requires the one forgiveness requires the party the offended party to forgive reconciliation requires both the offended party and the offender to come together and decide to work together for example in the case where a man or a woman cheats or does some kind of infidelity um, in their marriage the offend the one who has been offended can choose to forgive but reconciliation requires both of them coming together to work through that yes so it takes two for reconciliation but only one person in order to forgive so you can forgive you can show respect to the person you can love the person but it does not necessarily mean reconciliation in that the relationship goes back to what it was and even um and even then we still too have to be careful that when we speak of that and i and it's i see it even in my own life as i said when i was looking at this thing that it's not the same thing as the silent treatment it's not the same thing as i think one of the things some people have are taking on to know you know you deal with people professionally and um there's a certain underlying tone that the person gets so it's almost like whenever that person speaks to you they remember what they have done because of how you speak to them that is not forgiveness either right so if the debt is cancelled it means that you speak to this person in love you talk to the person all of those things it just it means that 
all the time the relationship may not go back to the same thing depending on what was done right what do i mean by this for example if you uh if you have a cousin or whomever who uh, abuse that child or even in the case of abuse right does it mean that to be careful when to be careful of other children when they are around that person is is wrong or means that you have not forgiven no but wisdom says that this is how a particular person is this is what has happened and so you want to be careful so being careful is not the same thing as not um forgiving and being careful uh doesn't mean that you know, if the, for example, if you're talking about reconciliation and you want to be careful with this person or so on, they may, it may not go hand in hand because you're being careful of this person. So there may not be that really, the relationship may not go back to its original state, right? So being careful of the person, especially in the case of abuse is by no means that you have not forgiven, right? And then the final myth we look on is forgiveness makes everything better. Absolutely not. And that is why Jesus encouraged us in Matthew to do what? Forgive 70 times 7. Not for us to calculate and say, okay, um, how much is 70 times 7 in a day? But it's, it, it's him emphasizing how often we ought to forgive each other. Why is that? Because we are sinful beings and, it, and we are going to offend. We are going to offend each other. And so there is need for constant forgiveness. So as the offense comes, there is need for constant forgiveness in the body of Christ and in our relationships because we're always going to be sinning against each other, right? So if we are not always forgiving, it means then that we're growing in bitterness. We're growing in resentment. We are, we, there needs to be, constant forgiveness in our relationships because we constantly sin against each other and where forgiveness is not constant you find out that we become bitter we become resentful and over time we become malicious and what is in our hearts will eventually come in our mouth through our mouths and in our actions and we realize that we're not living in that love that jesus requires of us so my question to you would be is your relationship are your relationships characterized by forgiveness are your relationships with your parents that parent who did not treat you well that parent who did not do his due diligence or her due diligence when do you still honor them they do in order to honor your parents they they don't need to have been good parents right you just need to simply honor them because the bible says that we ought to honor them so uh, a punishment would be because they did not do their part as parents. I am allowing them to pay the debt by not honoring them, withholding honor, withholding love. So I'm not going to, you know, send them pictures or, or talk with them or so on. That is us saying that we're allowing that parent to pay so the debt is not canceled. Do you realize how many of us are not living in forgiveness like how the Bible requires it? Is your marriage characterized by forgiveness? Is your relationship with your friends, your siblings, is it characterized by forgiveness? If it's not characterized by forgiveness, then it's definitely characterized by resentment and bitterness. Why? Because everybody does something to hurt. We will offend each other. And so we have to be forgiving each other. How about your relationship with the church? So many of us have hurt and so on that members of the body of Christ have done to us. Have we forgiven? Are we forgiving our brothers and our sisters? Have you forgiven that pastor who said that hurtful thing to you? How is your life and every relationship that you encounter characterized by forgiveness, even in the workplace? Because sometimes we tend to be churchy and Christian at church and in our homes sometimes, but at work it is absent. Are all our relationships characterized by forgiveness? Are we allowing people to pay for how they offended us, but in a different way? We may not speak up about the offense, but in a way, hold on to it. 
and we give them silent treatment and we do the distance. How have we allowed people, how are we allowing people to pay for how they have offended us? What is the challenge? That the scripture says that we ought to forgive each other as Christ has forgiven us. Is your walk reflective of that level of forgiveness? Even if they don't apologize, even if they don't acknowledge that there was wrong done, Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. Hmm? Are we able to see how even the offense can serve for our good when Joseph was sold into Egypt. Even Joseph acknowledged that, listen, when he said to his brothers, it is me, Joseph, whom you've sold into Egypt. Joseph said, but don't worry about that because it was God. How many of us are able to view an offense through the lens of Christ? Not to say it's not painful, not to say it did not hurt and it's wrong. And it's not wrong, it is wrong, it is painful. But we too have sinned against God, it is hurtful, it is painful, it is wrong. But God has forgiven us and so we too should extend that level of forgiveness to others. So I challenge you. Whatever relationship you may find, I know it's painful. I can talk about it. And as I said, as I prepared this, I searched my own life and saw areas that I had not forgiven. So what areas of your life do you need to exercise forgiveness? Cancel the debt. Stop, a lot. Stop letting them pay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm here. That's what we're here to talk about forgiveness so search your life you know the script the, the song that says search me oh god i know my heart i pray don't just pass over this message sit with it allow it to marinate look within and take the necessary action yes so until next time don't forget to like comment share and subscribe share this with somebody and both of you or all of you can discuss it together bye